Okay, so for this short video, I just want to review some aspects of Enscape since these aren't, um, I don't have this information in any of our old YouTube videos because I did not last year have a machine that could run Enscape. Um, now with the Sage laptop, I can. Um, I'll admit I'm a newbie to learning this and figuring it out. However, um, I've used a lot of their competitors. So I can say with a lot of confidence, it is so much easier and nicer than past things. Um, one of the things I think I explained in the past video is, um, again, it was originally uh, created to work and run on SketchUp as a SketchUp add-on um, to make things uh, more photorealistic in the modeling there. Um, they now since work with um, Rhino, which is a, a program that's used a lot in architecture also, and Revit, because they understand that those of us who are working in architecture and interior design also want to have to be able to do these photorealistic renderings for our client. Um, so again, it's, it's meant as an add-on to, to Revit. So it's not, you know, it's not structured to work and do all the construction document things Revit can do, but it certainly um, makes very pretty renderings. So I've already showed you kind of the difference between that. One thing to though to understand is when we add assets, meaning their version of blocks and families in Enscape, um, they are gonna show up in Revit in these gray blobs. That's normal, don't be concerned. But be, keep in mind that if you're going to use assets from Enscape, meaning lighting, people, plants, you're going to have to do your final rendering in Enscape so they show up. Um, but I just want to review some of the basics and like I admit, I'm a newbie at this too, so a lot of this we're kind of going to be learning together. Um, uh, so where you can find all the assets and why students love this so much is there's tons of preloaded stuff in here. So I'm here under the Enscape tab, it's this one right here, and then I just opened up Asset Library. Um, a lot of things are already pre-organized and labeled for you. You can all also search by a keyword. Um, for example, any of the plants that I want are here under vegetation. But within this, those of you who are doing um, green walls and things like that with like a whole planting system, there's literally, if you type in green wall, there's a bunch of those that come up. So there's four already for you. For some reason there was three and it disappeared. Um, but so you can kind of scroll through there are thousands of assets in here. So sometimes it's easier to just drill into what you want. Under vegetation, if you want interior plants, there's actually a category for that. So as you scroll over it, you'll kind of sometimes start to see like the naming convention of these. So as I was looking for plants for my inside, um, I was finding kind of by about three quarters of the way down. All right, there's those green walls. Right around here, you start to hit all these interior plants. So um, I'm just gonna, put one in for now just so we can see what it looks like. This looks like a big bamboo here. Maybe this palm, palm frond kind of thing. We'll stick that in. So in this case, the plants usually come in, they're gonna come in on the floor. So, and this is gonna be the same with the lights. You're gonna see the lights often come in on the floor. So in my case, um, it's starting off at the offset from host is zero, zero, meaning the host is the floor and it's at the zero, zero mark. That's great. If you get a plant that you want to put on a desk, it's gonna come in on the floor and then you're gonna to have to measure how high up your desk is. They're usually about 30 inches. So you're gonna change this number right here to 30 inches. Um, so now I can hit escape. If you don't see it in, the, in this view, you will be able to also put things in and out on your level floor plan. So in this case, this guy's pretty far away from where my seating is. So I've got it highlighted, clicked. I'm using now the down arrows on my keyboard just to kind of nudge it more into place. Um, another plus of Enscape assets are, let me bring up the library here, are people. So what happens with a lot of students starting out um, in Sketch, when we have you render in SketchUp, Lynn often teaches you how to put people in via Photoshop, which is great. And that, that's a correct way to do it. It works fine. However, um, a lot of folks as they're starting out often make their people too small or too tall into what reality would actually be. Um, nicely, Enscape solves that problem. So when you put these folks in your model, they're already sized and shaped at what would be the kind of standard height for that individual. You've also got some pretty good options of people sitting. So depending on where you put them in your screen, they work pretty well. Um, 
<laughs> somebody in their bathing suit. We're not putting those in our office. So let me see if I can just find a, we'll just put this dude in. So he's probably gonna, we're probably not gonna see much of him on the screen here. Um, so he's just gonna be like a body standing there. So we're seeing him from above. Uh, it looks like he's looking towards the back door. So I'm gonna rotate him around too. And so we can kind of see what he looks like in here. All right, there we go. Okay, so now if we go back to the lobby reception, and I can move him in space too, if I wanna move him farther back. I'm gonna pause since we've got my blue ball here for a minute. Okay, so here he is in my scene. If I were using this as a presentation, I probably wanna move him over to the left a little bit just because he's looking, he's kind of like, he's sort of blocking some of my interior design. Um, so there he is there. Again, he's gonna look like a blob. If I were to render this to the cloud, using SketchUp, I mean, sorry, Revit, sorry. <laughs> if we go to view, render in cloud and use that option, all of these assets from Enscape are gonna be gray and blobby. So if you want to use any of these things in the library from Enscape, you need to render it in Enscape. So the way that works is pretty easy. There's just a big start button over here on the left. So I'll click that. It opened up a secondary window here. So if you look over here in Revit, if I hover, I've got my basic Revit window on the left. I've got the Enscape one running on the right. The nice thing is, is if I, let me bring this guy back up. I'm gonna go over here. There we go. If, if I move him around in live time, it's going to, to update my uh, rendering here too. So I'm gonna pause and just let it kind of play out. Oh, wait, there it is already. Here we go. Okay, so here they are here. Um, it's looking pretty good. Like the lighting might be a little dark in some places. So myself, I might want to add some more lighting on there. Um, he's kind of, he's looking kind of like lonely here. So depending on where he is, I might move him back into this space because he's sort of central to my picture and I might want to shift him back like over here somewhere. Um, maybe you're coming down the hallway to talk to somebody. Um, so that's looking pretty good. So to save this now, it's really pretty easy. It's kind of awesome. So you can do uh, take a screenshot or export. So we're going to just for this one, I'm going to just show you take, what take a screenshot does. Here's an earlier one. I'm just going to call this uh, like test lobby. Um, right now it's throwing it in this folder by default, my pictures folder. So I want to make sure it's actually in my project folder just to keep track of everything. So we're going to do test lobby there, save. When it opens up, it additionally has other options here. So this is, let me bring it over here, bring it up. It is now the picture here and here it is here. There it is there. So, but the nice thing is it opens up additional editing options. So I can um, click on this. I can edit it a bit so I can add some effects. I can crop. Um, I can add some effects like so, so I can play with the, the lighting adjust, adjusting it here too. Again, I can crop it. So I can take I can take this image into Photoshop if I wanted to. So I can, let me see, let me just save and copy. Um, oh, it's saving copy, we'll do that, okay. So I can work with it within this right here. And, but I can also have a couple options where I can save it as various things. So again, you can save this image, play it around it more in Photoshop or this can be your image you start printing out and putting on posters. So that's one way to do it. Um, and let me just see about the save as. I think we've got like, you know, your obvious PNGs. So like I said, you can save it as a PNG. Do some more stuff in Photoshop if you want. Um, that's pretty standard in our field that we're gonna, whatever we render it in, we still kind of clean it up a bit in Photoshop. The other options here, this export, this is actually, um, you're making an executable file where um, you can start doing VR renderings and things like that. So that's some of the stuff you can play with eventually. Um, but really for our needs, all you need to do is do this take a screenshot. Um, once you do that, if things are too dark or light and you don't like that, you have some basic setting tools over here. So general settings, um, this is just more kind of behind the scenes legalese, but the visual settings are where you can play around with um, both the like the angle of perspective, the depth of view, meaning how close or far in you are. Um, the image, again, you can play with the, the lighting a lot in here, which is why a lot of people like this over just rendering in the cloud. You got a lot more options for your lighting. Um, atmosphere, this is where this set that background 
a like view that's coming out of here. So there's these default ones, um, town and urban and things like that. If you want to do your own um, custom one, that's what's called skybox. This is really tricky though. This has to be an image that is a 360 wraparound or this specially kind of image that's across. Um, it's very complicated. The idea is that your model is spitting, sitting in real world 3D space. So you basically have to get these 360 view images. Um, I can send you to some places where you can find some. I was playing around and trying to find some good Chicago ones. Um, frankly, they weren't working so great with me. They looked pretty distorted out of the window. Um, and everybody admits this is something that's that's kind of tricky in this program. So there's no problem using their, their default at this stage. However, if you want to, um, this is again a case where this final image, you might switch that view out the window, um, switch that out in Photoshop and because it's just gonna make your life easier. Um, one of the nice things about this is like, if I move this guy farther back, like I said, see how he just changed proportionally. So again, He's probably, you know, five foot, whatever. So as I move him back in space, he didn't morph to like eight feet tall. He's still five feet tall. And the cool thing is if I go over to my rendering, he's automatically moved back to four feet. Excuse me, I'm kind of hicc hiccuping there, sorry. But what I did is I, here it is here. The, the Enscape rendering is still kind of, a lot like doing updates live. So I click over here and that's where how he's moved out. Um, and this is that view, the default view that's like urban, which um, I don't know, the, the river looks a little green or whatever's going on there. <laughs> Maybe it's grass, hopefully. Um, but you know, this could be a view out of a Chicago window. So that works okay for my purposes. Um, but, and you can also kind of take a screenshot from here. But again, the easiest way to do this is just literally take a screenshot it creates an image for you that you save as a PNG, then that becomes your the image you use in your posters. Um, we'll be playing with this a lot more because like in a nice way, you're kind of our first class of students that all have laptops that can run this because in the past, not everybody had this. So we didn't make it required. We're still kind of phasing in using Enscape, but obviously if you've used it in SketchUp, you've seen how nice and crisp it, the images are. Um, and if you're, can you know if you want to use it in Revit we've got all these nice libraries of stuff that kind of makes these place these places look more realistic and sort of more alive with people and things and plants um so I will keep playing with this and I'll help you as you kind of develop into it and I'll make videos sort of as we go too